Be the Talk, Episode 233, featuring John Fleischauer. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with John Fleischauer. John, are you ready to talk? Nathan, I was born ready. Regarded as one of the top talent acquisition and employer branding professionals in Canada, John Fleischauer and his team at Pivot and Edge help growing organizations consistently hire awesome people quickly while reducing their overall recruiting spend. John Fleischauer, welcome to the talk. Thanks so much, Nathan. Pleasure to be here. So your title of your talk is called Resumes Are Bad for Business, and you're flashing this piece of paper at the audience. You come out walking on the stage. You're like, yeah. what could this piece of paper be? Is it a secret code? Is it a recipe? Is it the lottery <laughs> ticket? Is it, you know, it, it, and you go through this whole thing, and it, it's just brilliant because resumes, the piece of paper, going to a analog piece of paper in an age of digital abundance in an age where, you know, universal knowledge almost is just a Google search or a LinkedIn search or social media search away is really kind of laughable. And I think you uh, forgive me if it wasn't Da Vinci who you brought up, you referenced one of the scientists that it, yeah. that person would be so amazed at how almost backward we are just sifting through a piece of paper. You didn't use those words. That's my little, little provocative synopsis, but that's basically yeah. what you said. Resumes are bad for business. John Fleischauer, please take us behind the talk. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it was really the culmination of, um, I guess my own personal journey in my career uh, in the recruiting and talent acquisition space for years and years and years as well as all of the stories that I've heard from thousands of candidates around, you know, this is the job that I want to do. I haven't necessarily done it before, but we all know that the, the top performers out there, the, the people at the top of their game, they're not people that just go to another organization to do the same thing they've already done. Um, they wanted to, to tackle projects or challenges that they haven't had that chance to, to tackle before. But oftentimes the way that the, I guess the internet has structured the way organizations and uh, individuals come together, it's very much based on what have you done in the past and what can you do for me tomorrow sort of thing. Combined with the idea that the traditional gatekeepers in organizations in terms of uh, bringing new people into the organization, they're typically HR people. And HR people, there, there's different variations and different mindsets. And if you look back, say, 20, 30, even 10 years ago, HR people, to a certain extent, were almost regarded as traffic cops and, and people that create policy and program and that kind of thing. Now, there are, there are a whole different subset of, of HR professionals out there today that are much more strategic and command that, that seat at the leadership table of the organization and really put in the the people strategy that drives the business strategy. But at yeah. the end of the day, within the HR profession, the idea of the, the marketing and the sales and the identification of raw talent and what success looks like, it can be lacking. And what? so I was looking back at some of the, the best hires that I've ever made in my career. And most of them didn't have that direct experience into the job that they excelled at prior to being hired. It was more around capability, mindset, uh, mission, vision, values of, of what's important to those people and how they were able to apply that, that skill set or potential into that new environment that made them successful. And so it was really around the commentary of like, guys, like with, with all of the advancements uh, of, of technology and pace and speed, think about what Leo da Vinci would do on Tinder these days. Like what, what would even happen there, you know, but that's the world that we're in right now where you have that raw capability and you have that, that, that ecosystem or that environment where raw capability can excel, but they're not connecting. So it was really a commentary around guys, like let's stop focusing on capturing who we, who we are or who we were in two pieces of paper. And let's start engaging with people that share your values and share uh, the goals and share why you get up in the morning. 
John, I shudder to think what Leo da Vinci would do on Tinder these days. That is that is a frightening. I think he'd come up with a way to swipe right really fast. Oh I don't my know. gosh. Uh, I don't think I've even been on Tinder. Fortunately, I met I met my uh, wife on the internet about ten years ago, so uh, that was that was well before the age of Tinder. So I really almost don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I generally know what it does. Hey, Talk Universe, this is great that we're talking to John right now because really this is like this isn't so much about a resume conversation. This is about hiring. This is about talent retention. This is about culture. And this is about really updating the HR department, uh, some of whom are more progressive, but some of whom are, you know, still kind of locked in the 80s, maybe the 90s, maybe the 70s. And it's a war out there. The unemployment rate, regardless of what people think or feel about the current administration, the unemployment rate is very, very low right now. And that turns up the heat on these organizations. That means it's going to cost even more. That, that John's clients are having more pain point. They're paying more money. They're, they're losing people faster. And it's more of a crisis than ever before to have a good culture and to have a right way and an efficient way to be able to bring the people, the right people on the right seats on the right bus, as I think it was Jim Collins from Good to Great. Uh, put yeah. it. So, John, this is really a culture conversation. Let's call it what it is. I mean, I, I like the resume piece because that, that broadens it to everybody who's on the other side of the, uh, the, the application desk. But really, this is, this is about helping companies and organizations strengthen their bench strength, make more money. Uh, pour it right back into doing their their services and their products and making them better and better than ever before. So what what are your thoughts on that? I've kind of broadened the scope of this. We yeah. have a couple more minutes. I want to kind of give you a, a, a free range here for the next couple minutes to to speak to any of those pieces. Yeah, I think I think I think you nailed it on the head for sure. Like at the end of the day, an organization's culture is really the end result of its people. And how its people interact with each other and their customers, period. And when you look at, for the most part, every organization, their greatest financial expense is its people, straight up. It's it's payroll, it's benefits, it's all that kind of stuff. So every organization is shelling out probably 50% of, of, of their overall revenue on its people. But at the same time, this is a really good thing because its people are its biggest opportunity to differentiate itself in the market. And that's through its people as well. So, um, you know, when, when you, uh, when you have a good day at work, you bring that home with you, your wife, your partner, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, how was work? Oh, <laughs> or holy crap, we did this today. It was awesome. You have a bad day at work. You bring that home too, you know? And so if you have kids and you're at soccer practice and you talk to the other parents about what you guys are doing at work and blah, 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 blah. If, if you are constantly that parent that goes to the field every day and talks about how horrible their job is, that parent doesn't want to work for that company. And so you're, you're absolutely right. It's all about um, really um, helping organizations discover what exactly makes them unique and how to really harness that and amplify that message through its people. And that in turn brings more people that are like-minded to that organization. And I know um, I made reference to Martin Luther King Jr. Um, he didn't have a marketing budget. Like he had a vision, he had a dream, he had a belief. And it's because others shared that belief of, of, of what that future could look like. That's why they showed up. That's why they got involved. And organizations can do that today. They just don't realize it. And so it, it's very much a, a scenario of, you know, if you, to build a successful company, you need to have a successful culture. I haven't seen any organization on the planet that has a horrible culture that's successful. So you're absolutely right. It's very much a, a discussion around people at scale within an ecosystem. And that that in itself is an organization's culture. We've been enjoying this talk with John Fleischauer. His recent talk is called Resumes Are Bad for Business, as well as a whole bunch of other cultural things and, and uh, PR, uh, HR types of things as well. We are going to be back to talk a little bit more behind the talk in just a moment in the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. 
Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back with John Fleischauer. It is time for the Blitz Round. This is when I ask John a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of his recent talk. John, are you ready? I'm good to go. All right. First question, were you invited to speak or did you apply? I was invited to speak and it was kind of a funny scenario. I got the invite through Twitter and I, I was working in Australia at the time and woke up, came into the office, you know, logged into LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, got the note and was blown away. It was, it was a scenario where it wasn't expected. I didn't even know there was an event coming. And when I got the note saying, hey, we'd like you to speak at this TEDx event, what are your thoughts? Immediately, I thought, I got to book a flight home. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations. Were you, uh, were you dealing with nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? Yeah, that's a great question. So ultimately, yes, I, 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 had, I had some nerves for sure. Um, now, normally, I'm, I'm fairly collected. But even at the beginning of the talk, um, I think I made some reference to I'm really nervous right now. I'm really sorry. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, I, I, I got the invite through Twitter. I had the phone call, the video chat. This is, you know, this is what the event is, this is what we want to talk to you about. But they never, they never made me aware as to why they were picking me. And I never asked why oh. they were picking me. And they, they contacted me three weeks before the event. So oh. it was very much a last minute oh. addition scenario. Oh my. And, well, I, I think maybe there was something else going on. Uh, they may have needed uh, to to fill in there a little bit. <laughs> so ultimately yeah. what happened when I went on, yeah. when, the, when the host introduced me, and I had never heard this story, but when the host introduced me, she shared to the audience that John is a late addition and, and he is a late addition because when we started to advertise the event, their social media started to fill up with people asking if I was going to be speaking. I didn't see any of this because I was in Australia at the time. And so she shared that story just as I'm about to walk up. And now I'm thinking like, holy crap, now now, now I feel the pressure. Great. <laughs> thanks, I, thanks, guys. All right. So two things from that talk universe. Number one, if you, if you want to be invited to speak, somehow leverage your influence. Not, not that John did, but, but people were talking about John so much and expecting him to be at this, this TEDx event. And, and so he got the late invite and then he found out literally before he walks on stage, yeah. <laughs> which I, I can't imagine the pressure of that. I closed out my, uh, the event that I was selected. It wasn't my event, but it was the, uh, uh selected, but I knew about that a, a month or so ahead of time and I could prepare and, and everything else. But I, <laughs> I can't imagine, uh, hearing that in my introduction and then walking yeah. out and, and doing that anyway. Wow. Um, uh, are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender, John? Um, improviser with a touch of blend. Um, ultimately, I, I, I had an idea of what story I wanted to tell. Um, I had an idea of what were the main points that I wanted to mm-hmm. drive home. Um, but I only really created that outline two days before the event. And it was a scenario where I, I memorized things growing up. I memorized things in university. I, I have the capability to memorize. But as it relates to presenting information and engaging a crowd, mm-hmm. I'm not a memorizer at all. Um, so I, I, had a, I had a general idea of what I was going to say and what the main points were. But the, that piece of paper in my pocket that you referenced at the beginning of the show, uh, that was a last minute. It's like, oh, I should, I should use a visual. Why not? So that was, it was last minute. It was, it was, I'd say 90% improvised, 10% plan. Some of my best, uh, gestures or visuals, as you say, have happened to me and occurred to me the night before or right before going on stage. So I, I know the power of that. Um, uh, incidentally, where is TEDx, uh, Canada with a K? Uh, Canada. 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 Okay. It's, it's Ottawa. 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 Ottawa Ontario, okay. Canada. Canada. All right. Cause I, you can almost say that almost sounds like t- Canada. It's Canada. Uh, yeah. right there. All right. Silicon so, Valley of the North. Silicon Valley of the North. Powerful. Um, so this is my next question. And you already told us the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened right before your talk, which is when you find out that, that everyone's beating down the door, uh, virtually that they want you to speak and, and you just find out about it right then. What was something else that was really strange that happened during your talk or right before? 
Yeah, great question. So um, it's a couple of years ago now, but I, I remember the last thing the the organizer said to me before I went on stage was make sure you stay on the red carpet. Uh, and the red carpet was a circular carpet and it wasn't very big. And so I got in my own head because I, I, I do this a little. I walk around. I'm accustomed mm-hmm. to engaging audiences. And so I caught myself a few times going off the edge of the carpet. So I found that to be a little distracting. But other than that, it was it was uh, it was a great opportunity. I had a lot of fun doing it. The lights, the audience, people engaged with the jokes. It was it was good overall. But the carpet the carpet sticks out in my mind as a ooh. <laughs> We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with John Fleischauer of uh, TEDx Kanata. His talk is called Resumes Are Bad for Business. If you want to check it out, go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We'll have a link. You can watch that talk as well as you can connect with John over at pivotandedge.com. Pivot and A-N-D edge dot com. And in just a moment, we're going to give John the 10 second final word of advice. We'll be right back. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at be the talk.com. And we're back with John Fleischauer. It's time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. I think if you're a job seeker or you're in a hiring scenario where you're seeking employees, forget about focusing on your dream job or your dream employee and focus on identifying and engaging with people that share your values. Uh, At the end of the day, people want to work with people who believe the same things as them. And by focusing on the the, the two-dimensional details that don't even matter, you're not going to be successful. Focus on the values and not not on the pieces of paper. Focus on the values, Talk Universe. John Fleischauer, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.